healthcare is an industry that all of us must interact with, but most often many of us don't want to. If you're not nodding your head right now, you'll just have to take it from me as a registered dietitian that ran food and nutrition services for a New York City hospital turned health tech executive. Healthcare is one fifth of our economy. Yes, one out of every five dollars spent here in the US is on health care. Yeah. <laughs> but strangely, or maybe not so strangely, given how befuddled we are with how to fix it, it is an industry with tremendous decoupling between those that consume and those that decide on pricing and programs. Te technology was supposed to help us change that. Chapter one of healthcare tech was the introduction of the electronic medical record. Yes, just moving information from paper to computer. Chapter two of healthcare tech was the advent of more workflow optimization and workflow automation. These two chapters were incredibly important as the foundation of today's healthcare technology but they didn't really help fix the patient experience. In fact, some would even argue that it made it worse going to the doctors and having their heads buried in the computer. To understand healthcare's incredibly stubborn resistance to change, we have to go back to look forward. Maybe not so far back as to toddlerhood. That's just my adorable little man on an incredibly stubborn day. And actually, we are at the doctor's office right there. <laughs> so an example of someone not so happy to engage with their health care. <laughs> no, but that said, chapters one and two were really important. But around that time, health care was shifting. Payment models were favoring large health care systems. Community hospitals were getting acquired, driving up the cost of care for patients. Rural hospitals were getting gutted or closing down, decreasing access to care. And across the industry, provider shortages were beginning to set in, an issue we're still grappling with today, and with a particular drain on primary care. And in the context of all this going on, we had technology available to us that could help provision health care via telehealth, but nobody trusted it. The patient says, get my care through the computer? No way. The provider says, in this litigious society, risk some slapstick lawsuit just because I can't do my own physical exam? No way. And the payers said, give them the same amount of money for half the work? No way. So the, p the parties that be that had the power to make a major shift weren't really all that incentivized to do so. So instead, it was death by a thousand paper cuts, except it wasn't a thousand paper cuts. It was 10,000 pilot programs. Yes, the fallacy of incrementalism as progress. But then something happened. This teeny tiny historical event came along. You may have heard of it. <laughs> it's called the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite having the most talented and well-trained workforce, we found that our ability to use technology to shift people and services quickly in order to unburden in-person care was actually incredibly weak. The U.S. has the best health care in the world, but we are not nimble, and COVID reminded us of that. In the context of this major crisis that we hadn't seen the likes of in decades, we found that the leaders at the top were willing to make some changes that helped facilitate more in-person care. Telehealth services were quickly expanded and reimbursed at the same rates as in-person care. Remote patient monitoring was more expanded into more, more services and more quickly codified. And perhaps most importantly, the largest and most trusted organizations for the first time were really meaningfully communicating to their patients and communities 
that these are options available to them. It was incredibly important for this trust to be rebuilt in the healthcare system. It wasn't a perfect solution, but it was very nice to see the true machinations of healthcare and technology merging together for the first time at a much higher level. Now, I'm not saying that widespread adoption of telehealth is going to be the magic bullet for fixing healthcare, but what I am saying is that broadening solutions and the options that are available to patients and giving more consumerism in healthcare is, is incredibly important. There are hundreds of companies, billions in funding, and a lot of bright minds working on trying to figure out how to connect the dots for digital health solutions. The pandemic may have smashed up the healthcare industry, but we realize that we don't have to put the pieces together quite the same way. That wasn't working for us, and so we can use this moment to help accelerate change. You, as the consumer, are empowered. Every decision that you make, from what watch you put on in the morning, to what of the hundreds of apps that you can download that can act as your own personal care team right in your pocket, those are all healthcare purchasing decisions. The trick is going to be, how do we leverage those tools in such a way that they actually work for the patient? For example, an aging parent that needs to check their blood pressure several times a day. That information, even if they don't have Wi-Fi, can be automatically sent to their care team for monitoring. Additionally, it can also be automatically sent to their adult children that live a couple of states away to keep an eye on mom and dad. Another example, a daily check-in tool that gamifies self-reflection and of physical and emotional status and allows automatic recommendations for intervention, such as when to do certain exercises, you know, how to, when to take on a meditation, or even, you know, it's time to call your care team. These are options that currently exist and are in market, but patients really have to go out and find them. Opening up digital ecosystems will not only enhance the safety of this world of digital data, but it'll make the information more available to all of the players. It will help drive innovations in research and development. It will help physicians make better quality treatment decisions because they have more information. And most importantly, it will give patients the better ability to be owners of their own data. Which, by the way, data ownership could be its own TED talk. <laughs> Chapter three. Chapters one and two in healthcare technology were incredibly important. And now we go into chapter three, in which we leverage digital solutions to help drive more consumerism in healthcare. So what I'm going to leave you with is three asks. One, believe in the changes that are coming. Two, Ask a lot of questions and advocate for yourself. And three, give just a little bit of dose, a little dose of trust into this digital health revolution that's coming. Thank you. <laughs>